Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Levi Clay here and I am back again. Yes, I know, you probably just saw me just last night. But I'm back again. This time to do some more, well, something something probably a little bit closer to work, right? <laughs> Though, of course, uh, this will be a lot more fun than, than traditional work. Although, of course, this is what I do for a little. It's just occurred to me more sound coming out my spit. Thought I'm a professional. Didn't mute my didn't mute my monitors, but monitors are now muted. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this evening we are going to be looking at some Pear Nilsson, and it's Pear soloing over Jack Gardner's track. Uh, it's Lark Lane, isn't it? Should double check that. Should be should be a little bit more prepared. Yeah, Lark Lane uh, from Jack Gardner's new uh, new EP. The playing is incredible. The licks are incredible. The tune, of course, is incredible. But that one's down to Jack. And yeah, I love Pear Nilsson's playing, so any opportunity for me to dig into his playing and, and pinch some of his vocabulary is always very much appreciated. And I'm sure you're probably going to appreciate it too, uh, because Pear is incredible. And if you're unfamiliar with his playing, you're going to be blown away. Uh, right, so what do I need to do here? I probably need to get this posted on Twitter, so give me a second while I get this where I get this shared out. Uh, but if you are watching this, please do leave me a comment, let me know where you are from. Let me know, uh, I don't know, what your favourite Pear Nilsson track is. You know, if you've seen Pear Nilsson play live, uh, if you checked out his Scar Guitar DVD, I think that Scar Guitar DVD is absolutely fantastic. Okay. All right, that's out. Move a few things around. Mm -mm 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 -mm. yeah so let me just bring up my screen there we go so this is uh how the screen is going to look most of the evening you will see me transcribing on the right hand side we're going to have pairs track playing on the left the software in the top left is software called transcribe there is a link to that in the description if you want to pick up a copy great great tool for learning to transcribe or, or helping you do your your transcriptions so highly recommended it plays video, so this video file down here is being played in Transcribe. It's just a video window. So we can both see pair play and listen to pair play, which is great. Amaro is uh, is coming at us from Glasgow, which is essentially where I live. So hello, neighbour. How's it going? How's it going, Ross? Good to see you. Yeah. Yo, you, you tried. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> uh, right, so yes, yeah, speaking of Pear Nelson, um you have to go and check out his band Scar Symmetry. I really, really love his band Scar Symmetry. They've not put a record out in a long time. Uh, he's now currently playing with Meshuggah, though, of course, <laughs> um, which is, you know, quite quite a serious gig. Well, I say playing with Meshuggah. You know, nobody's really playing with anybody right now, thanks to this pandemic thing. Uh, once again, just like last night, we're on the lemonade. Oh, that stuff's good. Hello, Neil. How's it going? So I'm just going to run credits because uh, I have to do that. Massive thank you to all my wonderful... Well, let's try it again. Massive thank you to my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. This is my monthly uh, Patreon uh, transcription stream, which I do on the last Saturday of the month. So um, thank you very much for your kindness, generosity and support. There's a link in the description if you want to check us out over on Patreon. You can support us for as little as $1. Gets you access to my private Facebook group. You, know, you can hang out with us on Discord. Uh, join my monthly study clubs. Get private lessons. Download tabs. All of that good stuff. If that doesn't appeal, you can also head on over to Amazon. Link in the description again. And check out... Do it that way. Check out one of my books. So please do grab a book. It's a, it's a massive, uh, massive, massive help. Cool. Right, who have we got online? We've got Juan Das. I'm... I'm butchering your name there i, I apologize <laughs> love peers uh Piers playing and uh greetings from dubai dubai and Jurass is online hello from sweden sweden which is where per nelson is from so tons of great players out of sweden actually tons and tons and tons of great players out of sweden uh you know from the metal guys like uh per nelson to jazz guys like andreas oberg like what is in the water over there something freaky uh, 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 okay. Shall we get started? I'm lost. Where's my... Ah, there we go. OBS. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> right, so. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is... I've done nothing 
on this yet. I've listened to the track once, maybe twice. Uh, I've not marked out the file. So the first thing we'll be doing this evening is marking out the file. It will give you an opportunity to listen to the track. You'll get to hear it in its full glory. I'm going to hit play, and I'm going to mark out where all the measures are, and then, we, uh, little, uh, and then I'm going to put the beats in, uh, which will massively help when uh, actually transcribing. So let's take a listen to this and uh, see how it sounds, and yeah, then we'll get on with it. So... So what I'm doing here is I'm pressing the M key on my keyboard and this will put little measure markers in transcribe. It's going to help me see where the bars are. I was <laughs> too busy listening to what he was doing. Uh, hang on, sorry, delete that marker. far in the transcription this evening who knows but i'm having fun listening to it so <laughs> You know, I don't know if I'm going to get through this whole thing. I probably won't get through this whole thing. But, like I said, I just wanted to have fun actually listening to the track. Uh, good to see Jeff is online. How's it going, man? Um, so, yeah, now I've got the file marked out. I can put the beats in. So I'm going to edit this marker. Subdivide by four beats because this is in 4-4. Four, four. I want to be able to see my measures. So now I could, if I wanted to, I could highlight beats one and two. Oh, let's try that again. <laughs> highlight beats one and two. And just play those beats. Could slow it down. 
probably won't be any need to do that for that little section. <laughs> um, right, so let's crack on with this. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, where are we? No, we're on the B string apparently. That makes sense. So I'm just writing everything in Guitar Pro. Uh, I'm gonna write it like this. Just to give you a little bit more of a feel of when the slides are happening. <laughs> uh, life's always better when you leave work, right? <laughs> It's so smooth. It just gets that really nice. Whoops. Now I should put the, uh, there's a shuffle on this. Let's go with a triplet. So being a badass, phrasing everything on the uh, on the B string so far because why not? Okay, that gives us a nice sense of the phrase. I'm just I'm just deciding where exactly I want that to to sit. Sorry. I think there's where we are. The one's there actually, isn't it? hold that through and then take that into measure three uh, like this uh, where are we there ba -da -da. I don't like the way those slides display, but we're going to have to live with it. Um, what have we got here? <laughs> Which program, Elias? I'm using Transcribe in the top left and Guitar Pro on the right. You can uh, purchase a copy of Transcribe in the uh, video description. Neil was on it. <laughs> Ba -da, ba -da. Still all these Yeah, 
so we're gonna hold this and then ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> Da, da, da. Yeah, and he does pick that. And then hammer to the F sharp. Ba, da, 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 ba, da. We're gonna hold this. Ba, da. I've not heard of Shinji guitars. No, can't say I have. So do we want to put that in? Let's be really, really deliberate with everything that we're, we're phrasing here. So it's not a full. Bye. Do a half step uh, pre bend on that. And again, we want to be really particular. We go ba ya da da. tie in there, not tie, uh, beaming. <laughs> Carry that into beat three. <laughs> Boo, da, da. Uh, how do I want to notate this? I'm okay with that actually. Ba, do, do. It's gonna look all right with three measures per line. Yeah, I think you can space that all right. I don't think that looks too bad, does it? Nice note there. Da da. The thing with pairs playing is he's clearly so not just influenced by Holdsworth, but he's so influenced by keyboard players. He really phrases like keyboard players phrase. There's a slide on there. So let's make an observation. Since we've moved away from B string stuff. Um, when you look at this, you know, very not guitar y, right? <laughs> the phrasing is very not guitar y. Obviously being played by a guitar, but like I said, more keyboard player, more Holdsworth, more Bill Connors than your typical guitar phrasing, which is which is cool. Um, we've got a retracted message, cocktease. <laughs> oh, I should probably say, um, if you uh, if you are watching this and you enjoy it, uh, please do share it.
Tapa yapa. Mayama. I should probably take a second to talk about the guitars. Not that, of course, I'm not here to sell guitars. Uh, certainly not here to sell Strandberg guitars because I'm not a, a Strandberg artist. Um, but I love Ola Strandberg's work. And this particular model, uh, the Singularity, uh, Pendleton's Singularity model, um, I love it. And I really want one. It's, uh, this is, he's playing, yeah, seven string. Um, so it's seven string multi scale with the True Temperament frets, and I'm a big fan of the True Temperament frets. I have some on one of my Custom Shop Miners guitars. Uh, I love the True Temperament frets. I should probably use this as an example to all the idiots that I deal with on some of my videos where I talk about True Temperament, where they say, oh yeah, but the problem with True Temperament frets is you'll sound out of tune when you play with people that aren't using True Temperament frets. Sorry, does, does Pendleton sound out of tune on this? Because Jack isn't recording all of the rhythm parts with True Temperament. Why doesn't he sound out of tune? It's almost like normal guitars sound out of tune with pianos. Oh, my interview with Nuno Betancourt was a very long time. Like, how is how is it that Pear manages to play that phrase? Hang on, let me make sure you can definitely see it. Yeah, you can see that. How is it Pear manages to play that, that phrase and still make it sound legato, not like a guitar? He's, you know what I mean? Like, th that just sounds smooth. So I'm going to quantize this just a little bit. Now that's spooky because obviously you don't see your finger doing it. Now that's he doesn't play that with a swing fill. So I'm going to indicate that by putting uh, straight up here. Sorry, I should probably move move my face out of the way. Uh, there we go. I don't know what a fake guitarist is. Whoops. How's it going, Michael? Ba ba ya. Nice melodic uh, motif there. Ba ba ya, ba ba ya. Do we want to? I mean, there is a bend to the end of that. I'm going to put a blues curl on there. I 
I mean, is there something wrong with you, Famer? Are these tabs? No, I'm, I'm just drawing a fucking picture. Apparently, Meshuggah's guitarist isn't amazing. Sex tuplets here. Yeah, I, I do think of that as being vibrato. <laughs> Well, you know, if you, if you want to get done again, you're welcome, you're welcome back anytime, sir. he playing that yeah, it's there uh, well, bye. he does move position there Let's make this a bit roomier so I can see what's going on I've actually been meaning to make a video where I, um, let me save this so I don't lose it. Uh, Patreon folder, this is Pear Jack G, where we make Guitar Pro sound good. Uh, put the tempo in as well, that'll help. Uh, we're at 90. Because Guitar Pro sounds like garbage, right? Uh, if I highlight this, let me just tweak the tone in Guitar Pro just a little bit, which is never easy to do. Never easy to get a good sound in Guitar Pro. Uh, let's put on a Les Paul. Tiny improvement. <laughs> um, now let's listen to where we got to and see how we sound. <laughs> Way too much uh, high end taken off that. <laughs> ba ba ya 
da da. Uh, I'm actually going to change the Les Paul to the bridge pickup. Studio reverb, let's give it a go. <laughs> uh, reverb, studio. Why is that? That's done as a pre-bend. That's not right. <laughs> Sorry. How did I miss that? Uh, it's probably... That'll do. Let's let's hear it along with pair and see how uh, how on the money we are. Should be pretty on the money. It's you know it's pretty pretty straight ahead. Uh, let's give us a count in. That helps. One, two, three, four. Oh, I'm at seventy percent speed still. Sorry. <laughs> One, two, three, acceptable it almost sounds good enough to enter a guitar competition <laughs> be funny if it wasn't so likely <laughs> <Ba-ba-ya>. <laughs> now it feels weird to write with it does he play there He actually doesn't play a note there, it's staccato, there's just a bit of string noise. Ba ba ya da Ba 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 It's a fifth. There's I don't like that reverb. It's it's not that I dislike reverb, it's just I don't like the tone of this reverb. Uh let's make it darker. That's a bit better. Uh. Sorry, I know my face is in the way. There we go. Ba ba da da. That's the most rewarding part of doing the uh, the transcriptions, right? <laughs> Now, now he does put a little bend on that, so let's put it in there. Now that's off beat. I'm going to just play with a triplet. It's a bit a bit quantizey to do that, but. Da, da. 
There's just something really offensive about this tone. <laughs> Let's go in and try and tweak the tone. <laughs> Hang on. I knew I'd do that. Right, let's go and tweak the tone a little bit. I'm going to... Let's load this up. Uh, let's take the count off. I'm going to change the amp. I feel like I'm I'm better you know so I've been thinking about doing a video actually for a while um tweaking guitar sounds in guitar pro to try and make them sound as good as possible um and I've toyed around with it before sitting down to make a video I was going to do a live stream and then an actual video what I found is you can't you can't make it sound good and that's why I don't bother that's why all of my uh, transcriptions just have the default sound because it's so easy to just spend way too much time um, trying to make it sound good, yeah. Sounds a lot better in a mix than on its own. <laughs> good point, yeah. <laughs> that's why, actually, to tell a, tell a, um, tell you something funny, that's why I used to... Uh, hang on. I don't want to lose this sound, so I'm going to uh, go all sounds. This would actually probably be the most sensible way of doing it, right? If I did this and then went... Uh, track, uh, sorry, edit sounds. That needs some reverb to it. I think that's more Pam Nielsen. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like that's how Pear plays. That will probably sound cooler if I play along with Pear now, because it will sound like he's got a MIDI pickup on his guitar, which is something that I love doing. Uh, not using MIDI pickups, but I used to make those um, videos where I was uh, uh, where, where I would have my MIDI play over the original recordings to show how accurate my transcribing was. But I used to put on silly sounds for them uh, to give the impression that they were using a MIDI pickup, and people often thought that they were actually using a MIDI pickup. Uh, right, one, two, three, four...
<laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't sound wrong. Sounds like that's how it was meant to be. I've never checked. I wonder how the lead patch two is for. Uh, uh, oh, I don't fucking know. Let's try different lead synth sounds. Um, f fat. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, flute. Let's move the R the octave. That's naughty. Shouldn't do that. Brassy. That's definitely what I want. <laughs> Sorry, I'll carry on with the actual transcript. <laughs> oh, I can't do I can't do the transcription with it like that. I'm going to have to switch I'll switch to the guitar sound while I'm doing the transcription because that will just keep making me laugh and then I'll change it back to that sound at the end. <laughs> uh, let's just get that overdrive sound. I have a no Chapman policy on the no Chapman guitar policy on this channel, so no, I'd never transcribe it. <laughs> Da. Levels again for all fucky with me now. Ba -ba -ya. through beat two. I don't like quantizing that to triplets, but I'm going to trans to, to put that as triplets. Because it's it's not it's just slightly off, but we don't want to be here all day, do we? have to be shitty with this annoyingly but with this where it's going
what's my wife messaging me for? Uh, yeah, da, da. Yep, I agree with uh, with Robin. Pear is awesome. Oh, we've got a nationalist on. That's cool, right? Uh, not even looking where he is. Bye. <laughs> Cheers, Robin. It's almost like I do it for six hours a day every day. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, da da. Why can't I move? There we go. That sounds better. Ba ba ba. Now where do we go here? It does go onto the high strings. I don't usually put vibrato in transcriptions, but it feels right to put it there because <laughs> it's so integral to what he's doing. Um, who's the most famous guitarist noticeably influenced by Holdsworth? That's a really tough one. Um, yeah, I think um, I, I think probably probably Van Halen because Van, you know you're asking about who's the most famous. Van Halen is one of the most famous guitar players, and he's definitely influenced by by Holdsworth. So you'd, you'd have to say. You have to say, hold. You'd have to say Van Halen, surely. Uh, right, let's take a listen to this with the new sound. <laughs> Sounds lead. There we go. Let's have some fun. I feel like I should save it in case something weird happens. Something weird always happens. This uh, makes a change from me. Uh, what I've been doing all day, where I've been, you know. Transcribing and learning Brent Mason solos. <laughs> I've never been asked to do any scar symmetry transcriptions, but I've done some for myself. Okay, right. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
maniacal laughter. measures on three measures on this line I did, yeah, that, that is true. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have. I knew shit all about music when I did my GCSEs. I knew shit all about music when I went to college and did my A-levels. And I knew shit all about music when I went and did my degree in music. <laughs> I don't watch anything on Twitch, no. Let's go there. Ba ba biada. Ba biada. Ba do. Da. Oh no. Da. Ba da da da. Yes, yeah, so and no, I don't. I don't think Holdsworth is that influential on, on other players. I think there's lots of players that that listen to him and enjoy his music. I think there's lots of players that admire what he does, but I think very few players really sit down and try and learn what he did, and then try and bring that into their own playing. You know what I mean? Well, Satriani and Steve are great examples. Like, I'm sure they're going to quote Holdsworth as being really important, but they don't sound like him. They don't sound influenced by him, you know what I mean? In the same way that it's very easy to point at a lot of modern guitar players and say, you're influenced by Steve Vai, but you don't sound like Steve Vai. So... Nice, bluesy lick. Getting into my territory now. <laughs> Sure. Uh, whoops. Yeah, very guitar-y lick there. Uh. Uh, no. Bah. Yeah, it's uh, the f the flat. flat. Yeah. So, but the the just the question about like influenced it, it really really depends. And it, actually, it's really funny if you go back and listen to the first Tribal Tech album, um, Spears. If you listen to like the solo on Caribbean, you can hear a lot of Holdsworth influence in um, Scott Henderson's playing. In fact, on uh, I think it was Jeff Berlin's first album, first solo album, 
uh this scott henderson plays guitar on that and a lot he sounds like holdsworth for a lot of the stuff that he's playing on there and i think that's really cool because it shows that like clearly uh, during maybe the that f five years prior and around that time uh henderson was listening to a lot of henderson i'm sure he was listening to a lot of henderson let's try that again henderson was listening to a lot of holdsworth and it manifested in his playing but he matured and those ideas sort of sank into the background and he took the the part of holdsworth dna that he liked and did his own thing on top of it and now the holdsworth influence in uh henderson's playing is almost like impossible to spot but if you follow that lineage back you can you can find it you can see where it was where it came in and how it evolved into his own own sound so um yeah that's cool i'm not really into plenty if i'm completely honest with you. I do that as a trip. Da ba ya ba ba. Da ya da. I do want to put the grace note in there because that's how he gets into that note. Okay, let's do this. Uh, comments. T oh, Tim Miller. Yeah, so Tim Miller's a, um, a player, of course, that shows off his whole tough influence. But we were talking about well-known players, and Tim's, like, obviously not massively known. Um, no, Pear didn't order me to do this. I'm just doing this for content. Well, not even for content. I saw the video, thought it was really cool. Um, I just did the, the uh, tabs for all of Jack Gardner's album for him last uh, last month yeah feels like last month now <laughs> uh so you know i know the i know the tune i know the track so seeing pair play over it i was it was like yeah nice opportunity to do some pair playing i've done some pair nielsen transcribing on my channel before um but if i recall it was just no tell a lie i, d I have done a couple of pair nielsen things i was gonna say i've just done some stuff from his scar guitar dvd that was for uh, a study club but i did uh i did an interview with pair uh, a year or so back maybe even two years back now um so i'm sure i must have done some transcribing of his stuff then as well ba -da -da -da. yeah let's go with triplet there's a slide there. I'm just going to... I won't. I want to put that as a triplet, but... 
Yeah, I'm familiar, familiar with Emerald's, um, Emerald's playing. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Ba -ba. Uh, that's really clunky to write it like that. I don't like it. I'd rather quantize that. <laughs> but, um, get rid of that. you know, it's, it's the phrasing is really laid back there. And I could just write, you put it in as like with a triplet feel, but put lazy on it and doesn't feel right. Sorry. He doesn't um, pick that. I'm going to put the uh, bend in I've uh, transcribed a bit of Matthias, yeah, uh, just a little bit. I've I've not done a lot of Matthias' stuff, mainly because all of the, the stuff of his that goes out in products um, gets done by Linus. Mr. Gull does all of his stuff. So there's no real reason for me to do any of it because all the good stuff gets done. <laughs> I think, uh, like a, a scarce imagery or Pear Nilsson product would be fucking awesome. Right. Boom, ba, boom. Oh, nice. Ba, ba, do, do. No, there we go.
Nice little phrase. I love uh, I love Freak Kitchen. Yeah. Oh, someone commenting on my gat and telly. Trying to get my head out of the way for you, sorry. Uh... No. Oh shit, was he playing that? Uh, there. Da 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 da. Ba ba ya, yeah. Ba ba da da. Yeah, it's a slide, not a pull off. Ba ba. Oh, whoops. Ba ba ya. There we go. <laughs>
Should we have a listen? Because listening gets me away from it. Listening gets me away from having to do it. <laughs> right, so listen. Uh, put a new section marker in. Yeah, we're nearly halfway there. Definitely not going to do all of it in this stream. One, two, all right. You change my tone, don't I? Gotta have that silly bra sound. One, two, three, four. say we're pretty pretty fucking spot on i'm definitely gonna make a oh no i don't want to bring that up definitely gonna make a um a silly solos video out of this because <laughs> those are always fun uh right should we do some chat for a minute just you know just to, to stop me from going insane <laughs> Hang on, camera. Uh, camera. There we go. Uh, I've done with my lemonade, so I feel feel pretty empty now. Like, what do I what do I reach for to keep myself keep myself sane? Oh, look, I've got a little whoop. <laughs> You'd think that's alcoholic lemonade. Uh, I'm just going to do this. 
a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. You keep these videos coming and your your support is very much appreciated. If you'd like to check me out on Patreon, there's a link in the description. You can support me for as little as $1. It gets you access to my private Patreon-only Facebook group. Gets you access to my Discord server. Well, actually, anyone can access my Discord server. But gets you access to special places on my Discord server. <laughs> Uh, you can also get your name in the credits, you can join my monthly study club streams, or alternatively, you can have a monthly lesson with me, you can learn anything, rock guitar, country guitar, blues guitar, you can learn to transcribe, we could play some jazz, we can have lots of fun. If none of those appeal, you can also head on over to Amazon and check out one of my books, link's all in the description. Look at that, that, uh, that was so professional, let's ruin it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, why am I such a fucking cretin? <laughs> Uh, oh, so here's a really interesting question. Did I ever get caught up in too much technical practice? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, re I really did. When I was young, and you know, I'm seeing um, I'm seeing some of my old, old friends from back in the day on here, like Robin. Um, and when I, when we were scrolling through the um, the names there on my Patreon, you saw Brian Shoe's name in there, right? So these are all like guys that I've known from the Racer X forums for a long time. When I was a kid, that's what I was into. Uh, I've got a fucking I've got a dream theater tattoo. Like I was really into, um, really, really into technique practice. But of course, who who wasn't? It's such an easy thing to focus on. It's such an easy thing to devote your time to, and you get lost in it. Um, and it's an easy thing to use to hide from the other areas if you're playing that need work, but you don't want to face up to. You know. So I spent a lot of time working on my technique. So much time working on my technique. My technique used to be very good, believe it or not. <laughs> it's not so much, not so good anymore. Um, and that was how I started working professionally in the, in the industry. I was on uh on um residential guitar camps alongside guys like uh, Andy James or Martin Goulding or Guthrie Govan uh teaching technique classes for people for for younger people and um you know people that wanted the the getaway experience and that was a lot of fun uh but you know when you hang out with guys like like Andy James all the time you very quickly just have to realize fuck I'm never going to be as good as that never going to be as good as that but the thing you learn also is you witness what it is that students want and if they want the technique stuff, they're going to go to Andy. But there's going to be some people that are like, oh, I'm exhausted of the technique thing. I want to practice some other things. I want to learn some other things. So I just decided to be that guy and focus more on that side of things, the delivering all the other side of things. The transcription thing started to bring in some money for me. And so I started focusing more on that. And then, you know, my technique practice kind of fell out the window a little bit. Uh, so now I don't really devote any time to practicing and working on technical stuff. But that's because I don't need it professionally. You know what I mean? Um... If it was something that I needed, I'd practice it more type thing. But transcribing is something that I need professionally. I need that to support me and my family. So I do it a lot. Uh, you know, I sell country guitar books and slide guitar books and you know, write blues guitar columns and DVDs and all that shit. And they're all on country, blues, jazz, uh, that type of stuff. So I feel that I need to be working on those things more. But it's funny where you end up in life, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah. Good to see you online, King. How's it going? Um, right. Should we, should we crack on? Mm <laughs> yeah, so learning Brent Mason side is probably just as good as technical practice, uh, technical practice as anything. Uh, that is true. It's just a different type of technique, isn't it? And I guess I didn't really point that out. It's, it's funny when so when hungry guitar student said, "Did you ever get caught up in too much technical practice?" I think both he and I knew what he meant by technical practice. Um, I, I assume we're on the same page when we talk about technical practice. Um, but of course, technical practice can be many things. You know, working on your the, those uh, the hybrid picking legs that Brent does at like just obscene speed, 
um, that could be considered technical practice, right? But I don't really think of it as being technical practice. But you're absolutely right, it is uh, technical practice. I uh, I put a little video up in my Patreon Facebook group the other day of me working on a Brent Mason solo that I transcribed, and then when I really sat down to learn it, I was like, this is just too fucking fast. I can't play this. This is ridiculous. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to get this up to speed. And I sat with it for a while, and I got it to like 80% speed, but there's no way I was getting it up to speed. And I could have spent... That's a really good example, actually. I could have spent four or five hours, or a couple of days even, just working on those mechanics to build them up to speed. But I had to be honest with myself and say, okay, I can use these five hours to work on this lick and improve that speed, improve that area of things. Um, or I could use that five hours for something, you know, a little bit... Not better a bit yeah, a more effective use of my time you know what i mean like so yeah i've been many times the technique i found that my note choices suck yeah so the yeah man th these are all things that i totally relate to it, what, it was not just note choice when the problem with technique is you end up in a world in a paradigm it ends up uh kind of polluting the mind polluting is probably the wrong word but in in <laughs> infecting the mind no it influences your mind so much that you end up playing what your hands want to play what the th the things that you've practiced rather than the things that you hear rather than the things that you want to play so i wouldn't even say that theory is the solution i would be doing a video on this soon talking about music theory and how music theory well, i dropped my hair tie there music theory should never ever ever be prescriptive it should be descriptive music theory should be used to describe and understand things not to prescribe not to tell you what to play so learning all the music theory in the world won't help you become a better player because you'll apply your knowledge to it in the same way that you apply your technique stuff to it you'll be methodical and mathematical about it and you'll start going well i can do this and then i can do this and you just look at the way you can play your technical patterns for it and apply it to the technical mind you have to break out of the technical mind and move into the musical mind which is um which is a, a struggle um sometimes but it, you know it all, it all depends so yeah Oh, so I really like this comment. Yeah, I know it's not a particularly healthy response, but the extreme virtuoso stuff really disheartened me from trying to get better because I felt I'd never be that good. That's a really dangerous aspect of it, right? A really dangerous aspect of the technical thing because, yeah, you, you totally understand why people end up feeling that way, more so now than ever before. When I was 14, 15, 16 and getting into the technique side of things, the kind of the technical pinnacle of guitar at the time and I'm talking purely technical, was mostly the Chops From Hell stuff coming out of Texas, guys like Rusty Cooley. That was really like high-level technical stuff that we'd just all look at and go, how how is he doing that? It's just not, I can't fathom how that's being done. But now we're in a, in a world where that technical stuff has just been so far surpassed um, that people are now resorting to fakery, you know, <laughs> just, to, just to keep up with the Joneses, as it were. Um, so I imagine a young guitar player now that's coming up must look at this stuff and go, I'll never be able to do that. And they're just looking around everywhere and everybody's doing all this stuff that it's like, I'll never be able to do any of that. Um, and yeah, that's um, that, that's a worrying position to be in because you have to remember, you know, when you pick up the guitar for the first time, you pick up music, you didn't pick it up. Well, some people did, but you, largely we don't pick up playing music to do that stuff. We don't pick up music to, to play fast. Um that's something that you discover when you start learning an instrument you get you get kind of hooked on that side of things but it wasn't the reason you picked up the instrument it certainly wasn't the reason i picked up the instrument uh that was just something you know a a um a flirtatious phase that i went through and it was a long phase and i enjoyed it and i'm glad that i did it i had a lot of fun doing it but it totally wasn't why i picked up the instrument i picked up because of what i played music so yeah uh figure out what i like improvising on a drone major seven chord listening to the intervals that you like yeah 
So, or just the melodies that you like, you know? Yeah. Um, right, guys. I am going to head off now. Uh, this was fun. I might transcribe some more of this later on this evening. Um, might not. Might do. Might not. I'll certainly post it up on the Patreon page, though, for people to download. Hope you have enjoyed that. Uh, let me just bring it up on screen one more time. How do we do that? Do that over here. Ta-da! So, yeah. If you have enjoyed this, well, go and do some fucking transcribing. No, but more seriously, if you have enjoyed this, please do like, comment, share, subscribe, tell all your friends. If you hated it, tell your enemies. That's fine, too. Um, let's get a few more subscribers over here. It's all very much appreciated. I hope you've had as much fun as I have had. And, um, yeah, as always, I'm here if you need help. So leave a comment, suggestions, all of that stuff. It's all very much appreciated. Uh, I've had fun. I hope you've had fun. I've been Levi Clay. You've been awesome. Good evening. Good night. Thank you and goodbye.